Hey guys, it's Connie here. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you how I made this amazing strawberry cheesecake in my Instant Pot. So we're gonna start out with the graham cracker crust and you're gonna put it in a plastic baggie, like a gallon sized plastic baggie and take a wooden rolling pin and you're just gonna pound it out. I mean, there's probably a better way to do this, probably like put it in a Vitamix and just blend it, but this is just easy and it helps my son get his aggression out. <laughs> Um, anyway, so we're going to transfer the finely crushed graham crackers into a bowl. We're going to add a pinch of salt and we're going to add some brown sugar just to sweeten it up. It's already kind of sweet. Um, these were gluten free, so I found that they weren't very sweet. So I went ahead and um, added some of that. So I would do like a tablespoon and a half of maybe like brown sugar, mix that all up. And then you're going to take your melted butter. And all, you know, the, the uh, ingredients are gonna be listed in the description box below. Um, so try to get that really well incorporated. I found that using a fork and just sort of mashing it down kind of helped um, to get everything better incorporated. Then you're gonna take um, a seven inch spring form pan that I actually ordered from Amazon. I'll also link that. You take some parchment paper and I'm just going to take a sharpie marker and kind of trace a circle um, the same size as the uh, springform pan. Now um, I know I'm using a permanent marker but you're going to see in a little bit that I am going to be cutting kind of right in the inside of it so we don't get that permanent marker. Um, we're not you you know having that permanent marker inside cooking so we want to avoid that we don't want to have permanent marker in our springform pan cooking in there with the cheesecake so i'm going to take some scissors and just kind of go right inside the perimeter of that line that i just drew and that's going to be um, we're going to use this as a liner for the pan so that uh, the cheesecake doesn't get stuck it doesn't have to be perfect um, so that's what we're going to have there. And then you want to, um, first take some, um, spray. I'm using just the Trader Joe's, uh, coconut oil spray and spray the sides and the bottoms down. And that's going to help our parchment paper to sort of stick on there. Um, and then with the same, um, paper that I used, I am going to go down avoiding that black permanent marker again and just um, make kind of like strips that's going to go around the perimeter of the pan. So just cut some long strips and then you're going to go ahead and just place it right inside on the sides there and because of the oil that we sprayed that's going to help it um, stick there. If it doesn't stick, you can just spray a little bit more along the sides. Then we're ready to transfer our graham cracker crusts into the pan. And once you get your graham cracker crust all in there, you want to take your hand um, the way I'm doing it right here and just kind of press it down as much as you can. Um, don't forget to get the sides as well. And that extra paper sticking up was just bothering me, so there I am just cutting it away. And what you're gonna do is just put that in the freezer um, for about 15 to 20 minutes. And then we're ready for our uh, cream cheese. Now we have to make sure that the cream cheese is at room temp. This is crucially important. Um, and I'll tell you uh, why a little bit later, but once you get the two bars of cream cheese, I think that's about 16 ounces, you're gonna take your hand mixer and kind of lightly beat it and just to break everything apart, make it kind of creamy. And then we're gonna to proceed to add um, our eggs. And eggs must also be at room temp. Again, very, very important when making cheesecake. Um, you could add the eggs to the uh, cream cheese one at a time and beat, but I found that to take a lot of time to try to get everything beat with it, try to get the egg yolks uh, broken up. So I just went ahead and did a quick beating of the eggs first, and then I started to incorporate. So that's gonna kind of help with um, not over beating your batter. 
and I just um, did it little a little bit at a time because it does, does take a little bit of time to get those eggs fully incorporated so there's the second half of the eggs going in again room temp it has to be room temp the cream cheese the eggs and then we want to get that nicely uh, well incorporated there um, it will take a few minutes to do that then we're going to add in our sugar. Now, I happen to use monk fruit sugar. Uh, I got a bag of that from Costco. It's a very, um, it's not like white refined sugar. It's a like healthier sugar, but um, I found that um, it made the cheese, the cream cheese like not very sweet. It was just sweet enough. So you're going to add two thirds cups of that. I just wanted a healthier option for cheesecake. I mean, you're already eating cream cheese. That's kind of heavy enough. So I wanted to go light on the sweetness level. So there I am getting, um, I believe that's about a half a cup of sour cream. Um, we're gonna stick that in. And again, um, all the recipe uh, description, I mean, the uh, recipe will be linked in the description box below. I can't talk. Um, then we're also, while I'm there, I'm going to add some vanilla extract, two teaspoons of vanilla extract. And also a pinch of salt. And we're also going to add the cornstarch. Um, you can also use arrowroot powder which is like cornstarch. It acts as a thickener, um, but I didn't have that. So I just used cornstarch. And this is why it's so important to have everything at room temp, the sour cream, the cream cheese, and the eggs, because if you don't, if something is cold, the cornstarch will start to clump up in your batter. I've had experience the very first time I made this. Um, so that's why I know that it's so important to have everything at room temp. And you're gonna just incorporate everything together as best as you can. And then you're gonna scrape down the sides um, so that we get every inch of that cream cheese mixed in. And as you can see, um, the batter is super creamy. Um, but once you get into the Instapot and it comes out, um, that all cooks and it is a little bit jiggly when you first take it out, but that's okay because you're going to chill it in the refrigerator. So now we're ready to uh, put it all into the springform pan and then you want to tap it a little bit to get any air bubbles out. Then you're going to fill up your Instant Pot with um, a cup of water and then you're going to use the trivet and put it, put the uh, springform pan right on top and then carefully drop it in there. And don't forget to change your ceiling ring because um, you wanna have one ceiling ring for desserts and another one for savory things. So uh, that's how it turned out. Well, David, do you think the cheesecake came out pretty? What do you think? Funny. Funny? Came out funny. Came out funny? Right? Yeah, like the funny bunny? Yeah. Let's funny. see, put it over your face. Ah, look at David, you're the Easter bunny. Okay, so I put the cheesecake in the fridge to chill overnight and now it is the next morning and I am making the strawberry topping. So that is a little bit less than a, a pound of strawberries. Um, David wanted to have strawberries, so I had to give him some. <laughs> and so I have a little bit less than a pound, but that's a quarter cup of sugar. And I used regular sugar there because, um, and also a, about a tablespoon of uh, lemon juice. I used regular sugar because I wanted the strawberries to be kind of sweet since the cream cheese batter, I used monk fruit sugar, which is not very sweet. So I wanted to balance that out a bit. So you're gonna mix that up on a very medium to low, low to medium heat. And because the strawberries were not very fleshy, I thought it would be a good idea to sort of mash them a little bit to get the strawberry juices out. I regretted doing that. 
um, and I'll explain why in a little bit, but um, we want to thicken it now with a tablespoon of cornstarch and you add a little bit of water, about a tablespoon. Mix that pretty well and then you're going to add that and thicken it. So do you can see how the strawberry looks more like a jam, which um, I didn't want that. Uh, next time I'm just going to gently stir the strawberries so that they stay kind of whole. Um, so that's one thing that I learned um, while I did this process. And then you're going to cool it down and the, a fast way to cool it down is just to transfer it into a separate bowl. Um, so yeah, don't mash the strawberries if you <laughs> want to have a prettier cheesecake. Just mix it up and let the um, uh, juices come out. Um, okay, so now I took out my cheesecake from the fridge. I'm unbuckling the springform pan and as you can see it just kind of easily slides off. I'm going to peel off the parchment paper and look how beautiful this cheesecake turned out. I mean, oh, it is perfect. Um, the first one I made was not this perfect. It was, I didn't cook it long enough. It was a little runny in the middle, kind of too soft in the middle. Um, and then you just peel off. I like to peel off the parchment paper on the bottom and then put the bottom back on to the bottom of the cheesecake because I had it on a stand. And so um, I didn't want the cheesecake crumbs to get all stuck on the stand. So that's what I did there. And then now my I'm taking my cooled strawberry topping here and putting it on top of the cheesecake. Look how pretty that looks. It would have been prettier if the strawberries were not so mashed up. <laughs> um, but I really wanted the effect of the strawberry um, topping sort of dripping off of the cheesecake. So that's what I'm trying to go for here. Um, I don't think it really worked, but <laughs> um, either way, the, the friend that I made this cheesecake for, it was her 40th birthday. She absolutely loved it. And wanted the recipe for it so here it is for you guys i hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching and um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments below see you next time